In this video, we went through an example. I just did it on the whiteboard. I'm also going to show you a little trick that you can do it on MATLAB as well as Excel. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Sanchineering. We're continuing fluid mechanics. We're doing hydrostatics. And before, we derived the hydrostatic equation. And then we use that hydrostatic equation by integrating it using uh, boundary conditions, because it's a differential equation, to arrive at the uh, hydrostatic equation at equilibrium for open systems. And today we're going to do an example where we find the pressure at the bottom of a 100 meter tank. Okay, so we can start by, I love drawing the system, so I'm going to draw the tank. Pretty much the same thing that we have last time. But this time we have the value for H. So we have a tank, this is a fluid on top, and we're going to assume that it's an open system. Open system. And here we can draw the height of the tank, which is going to be 100 meters. Notice how, since pressure is a function of height, we can do this for any height. But, as an example, we can put this to concrete use. So, well, what we can do is, since it's an open system, we know that PATM is going to be 1 atmosphere, which is what? 101.325 for SI units. Density of water. We're going to say it's a, it's a water tank. There's a tank full of water. It's going to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height is going to be 100 meters. And so we can plug in this equation, P is a function of height, is going to be, well, 1 ATM is going to be 101.325 meters per meter squared, plus the density is going to be 1,000 kilograms per meter cube times 9.8 meters per second squared times 100 meters. Okay, if you, if you cancel out these units, these, will uni these units will be the same, you're going to get an answer of 108, 1.08 times 10 to the other 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 10 to the 6 is going to be pascals, or newton per meter squared. And if you divide this by, divide by 101.325, if you divide by 101.325, it's going to be about 10.7 10 ATMs. So it's about 10 to 11 times more pressure at the bottom of a tank that's 100 meters than what you and I are experiencing right now, okay? So, hope that makes sense. Please don't memorize these conversions. I want you to understand them yourself intuitively. So to understand these intuitively, that's why you need your dimensional analysis. I'm giving you this little cheat sheet because I know y'all are, uh, are trying to work for your midterms and your homework, but I want you to understand why we're doing these units. Try to do it with different types of units and see how you can cancel things out, okay? All right, y'all, we're going to try this out in Excel so y'all can see some tricks because when you guys are doing your projects and stuff, it'll be very helpful. So we're going to do the same thing where we're just going to start by defining our variables. So this is going to be the atmosphere pressure, input that, and then we're going to have the gravitational constant, which will be 9.8 meters per second squared. And what else we have? Rho, the density of water, is going to be 1,000. might be also useful to put the units as well, units per meter squared meters per second squared and kilograms per meter cubed and the height we want to look at which we said was 100 meters and whoops 100 meters so therefore the calculated um at uh pressure as a function of height is going to be well we're going to input the p atmosphere plus rho times g times h pretty cool right and that's exactly what we got before and the cool thing about excel is what if it asked for different heights let's say it said calculated at i don't know 50 you can just change it here and it changes instantly so i think that's pretty pretty neat and as a matter of fact we can view it as a function where we um where we have several h's so we can do uh one let's do let's go from zero to we click these two, hold shifts to highlight them, and we can go all the way to, let's go to like 500. 
that's good. Okay, and then we input the same equation again over here. So we say P as a function of height is going to be the atmospheric pressure. Now the only difference is you have to press the function for key F4 to make it a dollar sign, which means it's going to keep this as a constant. So if it's a constant, you keep it as a constant. So atmospheric plus the density, this is also a constant, times gravity, which is also a constant, F4, times the height, which is not a constant. Now, calculates it for zero height, which makes sense because this is the atmospheric pressure. And now if we drag this down, as a matter of fact, if we just double click this, it should instantly uh, create that. And um, in fact, now what we can do is highlight these. Uh, I don't know if it's going to do it because there's that extra thing in the middle. One pop, I mean. You can go to insert and then a scatter plot. And ooh, very nice. Hey, look, that looks like a line. So that makes sense, right? Because since pressure as a function of height, the only thing that's varying is the height, right? The depth of the fluid, it's linear, right? So what is the slope going to be? It's kind of like mx plus b, right? Cool, cool. Now we can do the same exact thing in MATLAB. So if you're new to MATLAB, um, I do have an intro guide. So I like to write scripts so we can do a pressure example. And then I'm going to run it so I can save it. And I'll just call this the pressure example again. Must contain only letters and underscores. Pressure example. So we can start by defining our variables. PATM equals 101, 325. And I'm going to use a semicolon so we can suppress that. And uh, I'm going to make a note that this is the atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure in Newton per meter squared. Gravitational constant, it's gonna be 9.8. And uh, it's gonna be meters per second squared. I'm gonna say rho, it's gonna be density of water, density of water, kilograms per meter cubed. And so now what we do in MATLAB, rho gh, is we can but h is going to be 100 meters. So we're going to say p is going to be p atm plus rho times b times height. The answer should be what we got before, which it is. Yay. Now the cool thing about MATLAB is we can make h into a vector by making it from 0 to, uh, I don't know, 100. So I'm doing a spacing of 0.1 up to 100. And it should give me a bunch of values for pressure. But if I want to go up to 1,000 or even 10,000, I can suppress this and I can plot H versus P. And I should also get a, a line, right? So this is pretty much the exact same thing that we're plotting in Excel, but on MATLAB. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. In this video, we did some, we did some uh, fluids on the whiteboard. And we did on Excel as well as MATLAB. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and dog.